Today I'm taking note of some new approaches to music production. Usually I don't write ideas down. Usually I just make. But today is different because today I'm giving a lecture for Abbey Road Institute. To engage the students, I will caption this lecture, Three Lessons in Music Production. In our traditionally stereo world, audio is usually a two channel experience, left, right. Surround is fun, but even we are just a two channel experience, left, right. Binaural mics are the closest thing we have to replicating the human experience, a pair of omnidirectional mics mounted inside a dummy head. The first binaural recording I heard was a YouTube video called Virtual Barbershop, released in 2007. He, he is coming up right now, and meanwhile I will go over here and play the music, play the guitar, because that is what I do here at the barbershop. This recording process for music is growing more popular now, as most people listen to music on headphones. But in the world of orchestral recording, we still tend to record like this. Close, tree, ambient, outrigger, etc. Rather than considering audio to be a strictly two-channel left and right experience, today I'm wondering if we can consider it to be more of a 3D concept without relying on binaural recording techniques to bring it to life. Where is the sound in the room? How close is it? How wide is it? Can it be brought forward? Can it be pushed outwards? These are all important questions. Does it have to stay the same the whole time? Or as a chord grows and crescendos, could it maybe get wider? Not just panning from left to right, but actually changing a combination of mic signals to accentuate and breathe life into the sound. To demonstrate, I'm going to show the students an example. Here I have a copy of Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 1 Orchestral Foundations. It has the mic signals I need, and as far as rooms go, well, this is a pretty good one. I open an orchestra patch. By default, this loads mix 1, a combination of many mic signals culminating in a quote-unquote classic sound. I'm going to disable this today. Instead, I load the tree 1 and outrigger signals. Tree is the traditional mic signal above the conductor's podium. Outriggers is an ultra-wide stereo pair of mics. This library has two main controls for dynamics and expression, controlled by MIDI faders set to CC1 and CC11 respectively. Each mic signal is also assigned to a CC number so that you can use MIDI to control almost everything in the user interface. I'm going to control click the outriggers signal and click learn. I'll then wiggle the fader that I want to assign it to. Now, I can use CC21, controlled by this fader, to control the volume of the outrigger signal. With my hand on all three of these faders, I can control the volume of the entire track, the volume of just the outrigger mics, and the dynamics, from soft to loud. In theory, moving all three faders in the same direction will make the sound louder, stronger, and wider as it progresses. Note that I don't actually have to move the mod wheel to get the growth I'm looking for. I quite like the dynamics around here. So now, just moving expression and the outrigger signal, I can create waves of growth. It feels alive. In film and TV music, there's often quite a lot of competition within the sound. Dialogue, effects, foley, music, etc. Often music is compressed and placed lower in the mix than we'd like, so we need to find ways to create greater contrast in our scores. And as a result, I would say that a crescendo from mezzo piano to mezzo forte is actually probably less impactful than a scale between 2 and 20 players. Again, to demonstrate, I'm going to show the students an example. This time I have a copy of Abbey Road 2, Iconic Strings, and Hans Zimmer Strings. These libraries feature 5 and 340 players, respectively. In Abbey Road 2, I load the Ensemble Longs patch. In Hans Zimmer Strings, I load the 60 Celli. In this library, I'm going to use the Gallery mics. In Abbey Road 2, I'm going to use the Stereo mics, which capture a nice signature of all of the instruments. In this example, as I move the faders, I want to change the perspective from close to far, 
from five to 60 players, from narrow to wide. To do this, I'm going to reassign expression on Abbey Road 2 to this middle fader again. This now enables us to control the output volume of each track independently, even when they're both record enabled. As you can hear, this simple C major chord is made to be bigger, wider and fuller, all while maintaining the same position on the mod wheel. If I go one step further, I can assign Hans Zimmer strings dynamic control to expression as well, CC11. Now, with just one fader, it not only gets bigger, wider and fuller, but stronger too. While I was studying at the Royal College of Music, I had a conversation with the legendary conductor and producer Matt Dunkley, who spoke about getting the most out of recording a small group of players. Shrinking budgets have made it difficult to hire the big orchestras that people used to, and I don't think it's any coincidence that the sound that is in right now is that smaller, tighter, more focused, intimate, produced sound. The advice he gave was to split the parts into longs, and long consordinos with mutes. This combination creates a blurred texture that gives the impression of more players. In the MIDI world, to accompany live recordings of standard longs, I usually double these parts with one of three potential articulations. The first, as Matt suggested, is consordino, consord. This muted sound takes away those mid-high frequencies and creates a warm, intimate sound that suits quiet passages. The second is harmonics, up the octave. This effect can create an upper edge sheen to the sound, a little glisten on the top. The third is tremolo, fast repetitions of notes. This creates the impression that there is more going on in the music than there really is. It adds a bit of textural chaos. How we use these articulations is where the fun part comes in. And this is one of the benefits of using MIDI instruments, where we can take control of microphone positions and use delays and reverbs or panning effects to accentuate our music. Here, I have a long and long consordino track. Just blended together, hear the effect that consord has on the part. Next, with harmonics, I like to choose a mic signal that accentuates the width of the stereo image. I'm going to select outriggers and the ambient mics. I'll then send this to a delay. This delay is about 400 milliseconds. I'm using Echo Boy. I'm using a send rather than an insert because I want to control the echo separately.
to create even more depth, I'm going to flip the stereo image so these first violins are now on the right. I'm going to reverse the image again. So now on the left, we have the original longs and the delayed harmonics, and on the right, just the harmonics. Listen to the effect this has. Finally, with the tremolo, I'm going to take it up and then down 1.5 octaves, 19 semitones. This will play the samples at the correct pitch, but massively slow the repetitions. We get a great blurring effect here. I'm then going to send it to a bus with a sound shift of pitch plugin by Waves. This plugin will be used to tune the tremolo down by an octave. Listen to the effect this has with the original. Taking note of new music production ideas is not the only new thing to this video. I also wanted to experiment with a slightly softer, slightly more gentle presentation because I saw a fascinating poll the other day that said, do you watch my channel for entertainment or for education? And 95% of people voted for entertainment. And it made me realize that even if you have learned something along the way, even if you have been made to think slightly differently, I think above anything else, you probably just want to be entertained. You probably just want to be kept company for a few minutes. And I've never really thought about making videos in that way before. I've never thought about that as the reason that I make videos, but perhaps it is. And I'd be very curious to see whether this style of presentation was actually more enjoyable to watch. So please do let me know down in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't done already. Click like if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.